All right, a lot of people ask us how to lower the rear bug for free. This is not that video. This is the coolest way to do it. Stick around, we're gonna show you how we put this in. All right, welcome back to the channel. If you're into Volkswagens, welding, fabrication, you're in the right place. Today's a special day, we got a giveaway. We're giving away a Demon Motorsports hydraulic system for your... Do what? What? No. Yeah, yeah, for the for the rear of the car? No. For the uh, for the front of the car? No. Definitely we can't not. give it. We can't, can't give it. No. Sorry. I want to do a giveaway. All right. Let's give away this. A brand new VW Fab works hot off the press hoodie. Nice. That's right. And we will tell you how to win it a little bit later on. So Ryan's company is Demon Motorsports, and he's pretty well known for doing hydraulics on bugs and buses, mostly buses lately. A lot of and I've been around them quite a bit. I've seen lots of them go in, but I've never done one. So today I'm going to do one, my first time. He says it's easy. We're easy going to cake. see. Now the number one question I think you get asked is, do you have to pull the body off of a bug yeah. to do it? Yeah. We so. always do, just because the first thing you need to do is remove this piece, and that's right where the body sits. So taking the body off makes that easier if you were okay with slicing your body right there to be able to get this part out you could probably do it but then you have to work upside down and and <laughs> no it's a i kind of think of it as like uh if you do a uh turbo on an older super duty yes. they say to pull the cab and i've done it without pulling the cab and you can do it yes it's just no fun it's just the same it's like putting an alternator in your car you can do it without taking it out but I did my bus pulling the alternator out and I'd rather pull the engine out than try to do it back in the car again. It just was no fun for me. I mean, but if your body's been fiberglass to the pan or has been on there for a hundred years and you really don't have any other way, you could do it. Just don't need to. Yeah. So if take the body off yes. and if you need to do the pans, that's a good time to do it. Just get the pans done yeah. and uh, go it'll through be everything a, while it's apart anyways. You'd be much happier at the end. For so. sure. Let's get started on this thing. Yep. Cool. Okay, first thing to do that Rob was supposed to do, but he took off like he does whenever there's something that needs to get done, is remove this piece right here. So we got a few spot welds. We're gonna take the grinder here, grind these little spot welds off. And there's a couple down in here. Then we'll get a hammer and chisel and knock this piece, it's just tin. We got a replacement piece that goes in here, so we don't need to save that piece at all. It's all garbage, so. Safety gear, start grinding. Time. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we just take a hammer and chisel and we should be able to knock most of this off. This is real thin and the chassis is much thicker. So you grind it right, it's gonna pop off just like that. A couple places in the corners here where it's hard to get the grinder in there, so. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark our template. We'll bring our template out. The kit comes with a template so we can cut it out. I'll see if I can find Rob maybe. And I mean, he wanted to do this and also, if we can find him, we'll get him to do that. All right, getting all cleaned up. Let's get started. All right, the biggest concern everybody has when they uh, call and ask about doing these kits is cutting into this thing and making sure they get it right. And they're, they're worried because it uh, seems complicated, but it's actually not. Uh, fortunately, Ryan has these templates made up and he sends them with the kits that he sends out. So it makes it real easy. This bottom one here centers up the, the center of the back here. So all you have to do there really is uh, put it on your little mouse there and bend this over and then you get a, a mark right here. That's gonna be the center of that tube. Then you can take a straight edge from the front. Now that uh, emergency brake up there is pretty centered. It's close enough for what we're doing. Line up your straight edge there. Kind of bring it down to your, your mark down there. Then all you have to do is get you a mark up here. We're halfway there. That's the other template he has. It's lays in right here. 
then you can kind of bend it over line up your mark in the front it starts at this little edge here so you get that lined up up there and you can put a magnet in there get you get your where you want to be and everything's all you do is now is trace around this template that's where you're going to cut and it's not precision it's just got to be close so you don't have to fill in a big hole when you when you're welding it and the one thing to look for is up under here that's where your serial number is right there some of them this line here will actually go up past into the, the serial number and you don't want to cut that off it kind of makes it illegal so you can just cut back a little farther here. just if you got to take off a quarter inch half inch whatever you got to do just cut back a little bit farther and you're good to go it'll all be fine so get to tracing this and we'll cut it out all right everything all laid out with our templates all we got to do now is take the angle grinder and cut it out easy peasy Hold up. I gotta take this dude. Here. Here. I gotta get these off. All right, if you haven't noticed by now, this is a thing tub. They're almost the same as the bug, the little bit differences in the pan, and of course it has this uh, truss over the torsion housing, which makes it a lot stronger if you're going off-road and whatnot for those things. Uh, another thing is we talked about doing the pans earlier. Don't do what this guy did. He's got them all welded and took the time to put them in but didn't finish the job. They're all opened up and you know, these pans come with a, a slice in it here so you can kind of custom fit them to each different uh, chassis. But yeah, don't do that. We're going to have to fix that because that's, that's no good. So what we're going to do, it's a little out of order if you're doing a bug. We're going to cut through this torsion, uh, torsion truss and uh, flip it back over, cut through the torsion tube housing and uh, then flip it back over. So it's a little out of order, but that's why uh, we said to pull a body off because you're going to have to work underneath this thing and you have to do some other cutting up under here. So it's a lot easier to go that route. So let's get it cut off and get going. <sighs> Finally did something. Oh, got to take this. Next, we're gonna cut out our torsion housing here and it's six inches. Our part that fits in here is six inches. So what we go is go off that center line that robbed you earlier and we'll just mark three inches to each side of that. Okay, and we're gonna cut that through. We can cut straight into this bottom piece down here, because it doesn't matter. We're cutting all that out anyways when we flip it back over. But we're gonna use a sawzall and just cut straight through, cut the six inch center piece out of here. And uh, the trick is try to keep it straight, You know, keep it perpendicular to this tube here. And uh, another tip, take the torsion bars out first. I'm gonna cut through this.
Last piece of cutout. Take our last template here. We'll line it up. There's an edge right here behind the, or it's actually forward of the trans mount right there. We just line this piece right up, up there. On this part, the, the, the new piece is gonna overlap all the sides, all the way around, and the back's not gonna matter, but this front edge is the only place where it doesn't, because it's got these little bumps in here on the, on the chassis. So if you're concerned that you might cut it too long, have a big gap in there, you can just you know, cut, you know, mark it, but then cut it short, and when you test fit your part in there, you can bump it up till it's perfect. So, let's mark that out. Perfect. Now let's find Rob, make him cut that out. Oh, pizza rolls are done. Got to clean up the edges, deburr them inside and out. We'll flip it over and deburr the other side and then flip it over again. All right, the next thing we're going to do is move these, all these cable lines. They all have to get pushed out so they're inside of the, or outside of the, the cylinders right here. So, what we normally do is just get some blocks of wood and a pry bar and you don't want to do these gentle. You want to like put like sweepy curves and all this stuff. If you put any kinks in there, you're not going to get your, particularly your clutch cable and your throttle cable. You're not going to get the, that long straight metal edge in there. So I usually just stick a block in there and just start, you know, just work it slow. What you can do by hand, the little ones you can do by hand. Push that out of the way. Get them right up against the side, so we got room in here. Pry bar, maybe another block of wood. Mm, that's a little awkward. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> hey, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna hang on to that, baby? <laughs> what do you want? Let's stick it right about here. Yeah. Watch my fingers. I'll watch your fingers. <laughs> oh, nice one. <laughs> it's okay, leave it. Get yeah. some of it out of there, yeah. Oh, look at that. That's pretty nice. Push that back down here. Not too far off. A little bit more. We'll do a little bit further forward of it now. Or rearward of it, I say. Yeah, closer to that. Sorry. Put it back over here. Over here? Yeah. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Watch the fingers. Okay. That's where that looks. That might work. No, I think we're going to have to go a little bit more in here, so. Looks like we got some clearance in there. Let's see if we're even remotely close. Something's hitting up front there. Our cylinder bolts right here are hitting this tube right here, so 
We really want the cylinders to be in there while we're testing this so that we can make sure the cylinders are what's really getting going to get close to that. So you want to kind of make sure those are in there. So I think we might have to cut these out of here a little bit. Our parts up in there, I got it butted up against that, the end cut right here. And this is what I was talking about earlier. You know, you'd leave that a little short so that way you can scooch this up and get that fit tight. Cause that's the only part that's not going to be overlapped right there. So being it's all the way up in there. We'll just measure how much further that way it needs to go. It looks like uh, just over three eighths there. Check both sides. Yeah. So we just mark that up, push the thing back in there, and we'll be good to go. All right, Ryan's got this notched out, moved it up just a little bit. Now it fits perfect back in here. Um, the first time we've ever seen this, the, the, the thing is a little bit more dished out down here. If you look at the, the assembly, it's you know about, I'd say about 30 degrees. I don't even know the degrees, but it's around there. And if you look down here, that's about where that would run. And you can see it's dished out way more down here. No problem though, all we gotta do, and just like on the bug, which is a little bit more, slice it up here. We'll knock this up to the assembly, weld it in. Nobody will know the difference. Okay, holes all done, all cleaned up. We cut a slot on either side down here so that we can bang that up after we uh, put this in, but right now we're gonna go ahead and flip this over, set it in place. We'll line up the torsion to part, this part here with this and tack it in place. Then we'll shove the torsion bars in and double check at the ends that, you know, nothing looks out of whack and just a nice double check. It's quick and easy to do. There's gonna be some slop in those, you know, you can move them around a little bit, but it'll get you somewhere. So let's see how this fits. It's like that. Perfect. All right, let's get the welder out. All right, what Ryan was talking about earlier with making sure that your torsion bar center is right here. If you don't have this in the center here and you've already welded up your whole assembly, you're gonna be cutting it out. Because if that's not straight in there, it's going to be a big problem. So make sure you get this nice and centered. Just to put a couple tacks, put the torsion bar in, check it, a couple more tacks. You know, once you get four or five tacks, it's not moving. And uh, then weld her off and you'll be good. All right, I got the truss rod welded in. The whole bottom's all welded up, ready to go. All we gotta do, <laughs> flip it over and you can weld up the other side. What? <laughs> Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the holes in the side of the, the pan for the hydraulic fittings to stick through from the cylinders. This is the template for that. This is the back edge. It goes right up against this edge right here. And this is the bottom edge. These cutouts are for mainly for the other side. If I, I found, different little brackets that hold the, the brake line down down there. So if you know if yours is in a different spot, you can cut it out. You can literally cut this whole thing out just so it's touching here and at the at the end down here. These pans were installed. There's like a big gap down in here. So you kind of want to compensate for that. So we'll line up the back because it's good. I can see that. And I'm just going to let that end bend over a little bit down here so I can push the front edge down. Yeah, like that. So, it's, you know, that's that's where it needs to be. That's the hole right there. Back edge lined up, so just trace your hole. Mm -hmm. 
you need to put a hole right there. On the other, this side there's not, not anything in the way, but on the other side you have the, the line still, the, the throttle cable line and the clutch tube. So make sure when you're drilling through, you don't drill through them. After we get the hole in place, we'll make sure those are out of the way and not lined up with the, with the hole or the hydraulic fitting because those can't be there. All right, last thing Rob's got to do is install the top piece that we cut off. Like the first thing we did is the last piece here. So this piece, you just slide on, line up your throttle and clutch tubes there, line up the back edge, right down here where the, sl the slots end, make sure everything's nice and straight. This lines up and you know, that was the piece that's where the body's gonna sit there. And he's got little copes for the, the arms to finish coming up through and uh, We'll go ahead and weld that in, and then we'll tack up the clutch and the throttle cable tubes here. We've already clearanced all that inside there and checked it with the clutch cable to make sure the clutch, the, that thick part of the clutch tube can go in. That's the worst part of it. So you want to check them both though, make sure all that works. Make sure you're not rubbing the cylinder in here, which we've done and weld it up and We'll do one last thing. We'll check to make sure our cylinders work right here where, the, where we had to cut it back a little bit to make sure it ain't hitting. If they are, we'll bend it up a little bit and be good to go. We got everything welded back up in here. Everything is done. We want it, this is one of the most important things to do on this whole project is run these cylinders all the way out. You can use air in the, in the fitting down here to blow them all the way out. Make sure they're up against their stops, both of them. Then bolt one on one of the ears. The second one, you're gonna wanna turn the Himes joint until that bolt slides in and out. So that way, both of these are all the way up when the pressure's out there. One isn't just actually pushing a little bit more than the other one then you know, you'll fatigue these arms and eventually they'll break as long as they're not uh, fatigued at all. This is going to last forever. All right, we got it all buttoned up and man, I tell you, it was, I had no problems whatsoever. It was easy. Just, uh, it's such a nice setup. You just drop it in, weld it in, easy. <laughs> easy, no problems. No problems. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can see the, the VIN there. Complete VIN, everybody was asking about the VIN going away. It's there. Yeah, we don't take that off. No, nope. and you have to leave it there, so. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of the video, we talked about a free hoodie. So when of you are going to win a free hoodie, all you gotta do is I'm gonna leave a link in the description for my favorite chop saw. Answer this question. How many blades are available for that saw? It's a trick question, I'm gonna give you that right now. So don't go copying everybody else's answers down here, but uh, make sure you're a subscriber. Answer the question in the comments below, and one of you are going to win a free hoodie. I hope I win. I know your, your username, and you're not going to win. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs>